Welcome to the 3D Print Entrepreneur Podcast hosted by Print That Thing, where we help you become a 3D print designer. I'm your host, Jay Wall, and today's episode, we'll be talking to Jonathan from Maker Tales. Jonathan is a multi-talented maker who has a background in film, laser cutting, and he hosts a YouTube channel with over 18,000 subscribers dedicated to sharing his maker journey and helping others along the way. We had a great chat about his journey into the makerspace from his roots as an actor and sculptor to a digital media specialist before he started using 3D printing to create mic holders and camera gear, which opened up the maker world to him on scale. We chat about Bitcoin, NFTs, and the future of 3D printing. But before we dive into the interview, here's a quick word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Print That Thing, an educational platform that helps you become a 3D print designer within 30 days. We provide easy to digest lessons that compound so you can learn fast. We teach a unique and flexible workflow not found anywhere else. You'll learn by doing while creating 10 unique designs, giving you a strong foundation to get you 3D printing your own ideas. If you want to unleash your superpower of 3D print design, become a member at ptt.live for designs, courses, and community. Hello, fellow 3D printers. Uh, welcome to the Print That Thing podcast, where it is all about 3D print and entrepreneur and entrepreneurship and influencers. Today, we have one of my favorite people is Jonathan from Maker Tales, and he is a super creative dude. And come on into the show. Welcome, Jonathan. How are you doing? What's up? What's up? Yes. Yeah. It's God, how long have we known each other now? It's like over a year over and a, a half. Year. Yeah, I have to tell people the story. So if you don't know about Jonathan, he's a super creative. He does a lot of lasers and 3D printing and just, just, just creative on all fronts. Uh, but he messaged me a long time ago. It was like, just out of the blue, an email was like, hey, uh, can, can we do like a collaboration or something? Or can I take your, he, I, no, you bought our course. Yeah, he bought our workshop. And then he was like, let's yeah. do a YouTube collaboration. I didn't even know who this guy was. And then we've known each other for years now. So thanks for reaching out. <laughs> yeah. No, no worries. No worries. It was good fun. I remember I only had, maybe I just broke a thousand subscribers or something like that. It was, yes. it was crazy. Yeah. And you can check out his YouTube. Awesome. His YouTube has been blowing up right now. You do, a, he does a lot of precision modeling. So if anyone's very interested in practical print, printing, laser cutting, tell them all what you do, what you're, what you're working on now or anything. So basically Maker Tales is all about sharing my maker journey to basically help you in yours. And a big part of it was, well, everything that does precision usually is paid or really hard to learn. So I had to choose either free card, which seemed to have like no one really teaching it deeply. And then when you do try and learn it, you just get lost or try and get something else that does a lot more, which is Blender. And that's when I went, okay, I'm going to go for Blender because I want to be able to render and make things really pretty as well. Yes. And then that's where I basically found Wall, And from there, it's all history now. I've, it took me about three months to get my head around it. But after that, I've never looked back. That's great. So what were you, what softwares were you using before Blender? Kind of give us your, your story. How did you get into 3D printing? You know, okay. And okay. So <clears throat> I, mine's quite a long that's story. That's okay. Because yeah. quite frankly, I didn't start doing any type of 3D printing or precision work at all. In fact, I started as an actor. Whoa, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, so so I did a lot of acting and a lot of art. And I was a sculptor. I make things with my hands and sculpt. I made massive metal angels, what? snow sculptures, all types of stuff. That was like my thing to do with my hands. Wow. And then I love to do acting and dance. I used to do ballet, tap, modern, choreographic, and jazz, all of it. What? I had no so, clue about all this. Is, yeah. You just keep surprising me. <laughs> and then from there, I from all the arts and stuff, I had to basically decide what I'm going to do. And then I went into university and I decided either see the drama or the creative digital side of things. So I went with the creative digital side and I did creative digital media, which is a brand new course in the UK that literally teaches you almost everything from video production, 3D modeling, um, animation whoa so how long was that program is it years or it was years it was four years in total okay. but it was full on got my bachelor of arts from there and on the last year i had to specialize mm. and i and to be totally honest yeah. here i didn't learn anything apart from animation in my entire time there <laughs> because all the rest i pretty much would just go online learn it and then Go and do yeah. it. So I went, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn visual effects mm -hmm. and animation because 
that touched so many things. It touched sound design, mm -hmm. it touched 3D modeling, texturing, photography. Yeah, you get it. to so be like, like a director wanna... almost, like the, exactly. the whole ever, you get to control it all. Everything, yes. it's in your head yes. and you go, I wanna make that real. So of course, I didn't realize then at that point that was like, okay, you should do 3D modeling and making things real. But instead I was working very much with the visual world. So I basically learned to Maya. Oh, okay. And Nuke. And Nuke, so these or sorry, very, what was that, Nuke? Nuke. Nuke, okay, Nuke yeah. Nuke is a, a compositing program, right. node-based. Not like After Effects, I, right? But node-based ish. Yeah, okay, it's okay. basically After Effects on steroids. Oh, okay, okay. It's, I've heard a lot of people it's, using, it's, like the pro pros using Nuke. Yeah. Yeah. Nuke, Nuke is just composition. Mm -hmm. So think of it literally as if within Blender, you have all these nodes mm -hmm. that do like noise and all that. Mm -hmm. Instead of using noise, it's clips of videos and how you mix them together. Oh, wow. And that's all it used to do. That's cool. So, yeah, even back then, they did not have good tracking or anything it was really <laughs> difficult and maya i i really dislike maya right right because when i learned it half of it was out of date and it was really it wasn't a great introduction to 3d right right let's just leave it's it clunky there. but yeah so then we're gonna fast forward okay i went over to london uh -huh. and i went i'm gonna make it as a video guy and i'm gonna go out there did not work at the end of the day, I learned so much marketing mm. that I turned into a creative agency. Smart. Yeah. And from that creative agency, I basically just turned into marketing going over and over. And one thing that I found was I had all these tools and things to work together, but all this camera equipment really was costing a lot. Yes, it's an expensive hobby. Bit, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. <laughs> to, to get a bit that just connect two things together was like 50 pounds or like almost $75. It was nuts. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, you know what? There must be another way of doing yeah. this. Like there was this little clip for a microphone that you'd have under your shirt. So it doesn't show up and it doesn't rub mm -hmm. on the material. Just one of those was like a hundred pounds. Oh my gosh. I went, nah, I'm, I'm not doing that. No. So I went and learned Tinkercad yeah! online. I love Tinkercad. Love I Tinkercad. It, 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 it really does feel like Play-Doh. Because you you make the right shape first. It's so easy. And then you use that shape to make everything else. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. Yeah, I love yeah. It. And if anyone is listening and you've never done three D print design, go try. Just play around with Tinkercad. It's it's a good way to just kind of get yeah. your see if you even like it. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> like Tinkercad is the way to first play around with anything. Mm -hmm. It's it's so fun, intuitive <laughs> yeah, yeah. more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like. You have a cube. I want to cut that away. You do that. So when did you like uh, dr drift into like the 3D printing part of it or where? So I, I had to go back to really find that one. Mm -hmm. And for that, that was around 2015. Yep. I bit the bullet. Now, before 2015, I really wanted to do like the rep wrap and all that and open mm -hmm, source. But mm -hmm. I was just like, because this was like right at the beginning type of 3d printers it was just sort of a wild west <laughs> do i really want the headache of dealing with the first prototypes yes. of 3d printers so out of nowhere zortrax had the kickstarter mm -hmm. went great and all the reviews coming from it were like hand down amazing mm -hmm. yes i now if I could speak to my old self, I'd be like, don't do it. But <laughs> Same with me. I, I bought I a MakerBot, dude. That's probably even worse. I just was like, I don't want to build anything because I'm, I'm a filmmaker. I just want to yeah. pay. I'll pay two, three thousand dollars just for that, a machine that that's works. The same. Yeah, that's the <laughs> yeah. same. I, I paid one thousand eight hundred. Yeah, pounds, I was about that. Which too. is like two thousand three hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, now on, but, on top of that, I paid for for Cinema 4D. So I was like, I'm going to do I'm going to do I'll buy an expensive printer and an expensive software to like make sure I do this. So I'm right there. I, I, I know the feeling. Yeah. So I got myself the the Zortrax M200 and the first ever 3D print I did, mm -hmm. I think, was this little like um helical thing like torture test uh -huh. and it just did it and i was just like okay that i'm i'm happy with that <laughs> so then i went how small can i get mm -hmm. and i made a button for Ooh. 
my a great idea. girlfriend's, she was making an iPad case uh -huh. and she wanted to have a button. So I made a button and I was like, okay, great. And then from there, I was like, okay, let's make something practical now. Practical. And that's when I made my own microphone thing Ooh. for that under the what shirt. What software did you and use for I, that? Do you remember? Tinkercad. Tinkercad, that's great. And, and that there was actually my very first 3D print design and object that I sold. Ooh, so how did that feel printing your, your own design and then selling it? What would that feel? Oh, it was, it, it was awesome. <laughs> and, and not only that, but then you, you go into the right communities. That's the key thing here is find the community for the solution you're solving. Yeah. Cause the whole thing about 3d printing is that you can customize it for any niche. So any anything. Niche, just when it. you were talking about niche. buttons, I was like, Oh my gosh, that could be it. Oh, you could be a button designer for, you know, and oh, just run with that, that there's, for years. There's someone that does bow ties. Oh gosh. See, it's just endless. That just does bow ties. Nothing else does 3d printed laser cut bow ties. And that's, all their Etsy store is. I can't remember them, but it's it's all. Awesome. If you could only sell one product, what would you want? To, what you have an idea of? Like I would, because I would do like hats. I do. What would you? What would you do? I do know what I would what want. What niche? Puzzle boxes. Oh yeah, puzzle boxes. Yes, you were very interested in that. Yeah, yeah show off a puzzle so, box here. I'll, I'll show off one of my puzzle boxes. So Woo! here's a 15 step. Oh my gosh. Laser cut puzzle box. Wow. And it's it's full on, but. I love puzzle boxes. Do you do the like, Rubik's cube? It, how do you know how to do that too? I don't. Oh, I, I don't. feel like you would love a Rubik's cube. I, I would. I would. I'm gonna I get you one for and... for Christmas if you're a good boy this year. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, it would be puzzle box if I had to do. But anyway, yes. So Sorry. first ever three D print. Yes. And I showed it to the community of filmmakers because they all wanted the same because ah. we had the it's the sennheiser mic mm -hmm. and the little attachment for it was so much and then i i said hey guys what do you guys think of this like do you think this will work and the first thing i get wasn't a i do you think i think it will work it would be like how much are they oh yeah and i was just oh. like i did not expect that answer right 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 uh, so so coming from that I completely and utterly undersold myself. Oh yeah, we you I, all we, we all do I, that in the beginning. Oh, I I, I did it real bad. Good. I think I, I I was selling these things for only two pounds mm -hmm. right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When oh, and I you know, were printing them for I, people I, too. I just made something that was a hundred. Right. Well, you were printing them. Yeah. Oh yeah printing yeah yeah yeah. Posting. Well, hopefully you learned your lesson, Jonathan. <laughs> oh, I did. I've done that I too. Did. I did. Yes. I did. You have to do but that. Was, yeah. And what was great was then in the same community, they asked, hey, can you change it for this microphone and that microphone? Custom. Yeah. So that's that brilliant. was that was pretty awesome. Dude, that's, I love that. That's your story. Because I got into filmmaking. I mean, I got into 3D printing, one, because of visual effects. So we have very similar stories. And um, when I got started, I was like, I want to make 3D print like camera rigs, things like, you know, just to help the, the film industry. There's so many, pro I mean, filmmaking is problem solving. So is 3D print design. So I think we just love solving problems. I think that's really what it is. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think in the film industry, if, if, if we can speak from any experience, yeah. there's a lot of problems. Every second, every minute. <laughs> every, every minute there's a problem. Yeah. And not, especially when you're doing quite guerrilla-esque oh, yeah. and low budget, mm -hmm. it's just like, how can I make this work? Smooth. In the lowest budget, yeah. as nice as but possible. Yeah, look and and look very expensive and incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I and it, it it went on from there because I created GoPro mounts for people. Cool. I created a crazy like after a little bit of time, mm -hmm. um, it went around town that I was making things mm -hmm. for film stuff, and that's when quite a big agency. Uh -huh that was doing an advert for, I forget what they're called. Is it Behance shoes or balance shoes? Uh -huh. Anyway, something, some big brand yeah. of shoes. And they wanted to do like a, a movable bullet time. Oh, so they were going to have 15, um, seven D cameras Whoa. on this big semicircle. Mm -hmm with like three or four people holding this rig. Oh my God. And then you would have the person in the middle doing some sort of sport thing. So you could record all of them mm -hmm. and then have it just go bullet time around like matrix. Yeah, do that them. matrix effect. 
Oh my God. That was, that was the day that I went into laser cutting as well. Wow. Dang. I love that. You're such an entrepreneur too. I don't know if you are, were you always entrepreneurial kind of spirit? Like, were you like working and doing things as a kid or? I, I actually haven't really had a boss in my life. Ooh, um, dude, that's, um, that's, I, that's awesome. That's very good. It, it's pretty much something that I've done. I think my first business I set up, mm-hmm. I was 12 years old. Wow. 12? Uh-huh. Yeah, 12 years old. And I was called the Flaming Grass Cutter. Oh, oh dude, I've cut grass too. That's so funny. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> so yeah i was i was the flaming grass cutter. flaming grass cutter uh, i even made my own little logo i got myself business cards oh, wow. that i printed out myself and cut them it was it was brilliant so are your parents was, entrepreneurs too are you mainly like like you just is this coming from just you or your parents like that too i would say my mother's an artist okay. and my father is a businessman oh so you got the best of both it was just sort of a more than anything i'm just really I, I don't want to sound a little bit too bravo, but I'm really creative. Oh, yeah. Like, we if all I'm are. not being creative, <laughs> I'm not happy. Like, I, I've been very fortunate in my life that I've learned, like, my passion mm-hmm. early. Yes. Which is creativity. Yes. If you're being creative, it doesn't matter anything else. I concur. So, That's literally the, the like that. Cause sometimes, like, you know, if you, you know, when you get into a funk and you're just like not feeling it, you know, you're just like, oh, you're kind of low. And that's natural with anything in life. But like, that's been my thing is like, just keep creating. Like, I feel like we're all here to be creators, you know? And like, I hate it when people are like, oh, I'm not creative. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, you literally are a creative being, you know, like it's oozing out of you. You're just like holding it in. So I think everybody can do it. And I think that's whenever we feel the, the happiest. And it's like, just, it just releases something whenever you're being creative and problem solving. Yeah, I think it's got a little bit to do, if I'm going to go a little bit philosophical. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> is, is that the way that society is set up right now is like, everybody, you've got to have a goal. You've got to have a goal. And that goal is what you've got to go do. You get that goal. That is the wrong is, way to look at so, life. It's so backwards. The, the way you should look at life is, what are you building? Mm. Not the goal. It's like, are you building relationships? Ooh. Are you building your brand right. are you building co- connections it's all about building because then yeah. at that point the goal doesn't look so scary yes because it's not a goal anymore it's uh i'm building the pillar that i'm on right it's now it's the process i'm happy with that yes that's what yes. i've been tr- struggling struggling with because i'm like so like like everybody we're very taught almost as a to be very goal oriented like you were saying but yeah. like i have a thing up here that says like love the process and it just reminds me every day love the process and just staying because it's like you're there even if you like if you have a goal to make a million dollars or uh, help a hundred thousand people you know anything like that like once you get there you're still going to have another goal you know it's always going to be another thing so it's like just learning how to love the process i love that you said building what are you building because right here i've been i've been thinking of that a lot too and it just says building badass 3d print designers because i have to keep a focus you're like what are we doing and both yeah. of us we're building badass 3d print designers to let them create what they want and i think that's i'm right there with you dude yeah beautiful it's also a thing that i feel that a lot everybody is expected you have to have perfection like that's not no matter what perfection is it my screens i've had this for the last three years i have in big text Make it raw, not perfect. Oh, make it raw, not perfect. I remember you told me that when we first met, and I was like, "Yes, that's be- that's yeah. that's some great advice." If you hear nothing else from this podcast, the last thing and this thing, <laughs> just <Yeah>. make stuff. <laughs> it, like it truly yeah. is. Like when it when it comes to it, I, you and me, we both started with failed things, probably. Every day. Like, I mean, I, the, the, the thing day. I just printed this morning was a failure. And I was like, oh, dang. But then I'm like, okay, now I know how to make it better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, I don't think it's like, I'm going to show you something. Okay, show me. Right? Yes. Yeah. So this is great. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Again, go check out Maker Tales on YouTube. He's also got some stuff on his website that's coming up. So go to makertales.com, I believe. Um, what you, oh, 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 oh yeah. yeah. 
There you go. Failures. <laughs> All failures. Yep. Yes, but we don't show that part. <laughs> we should, we though. No, yeah. we don't. <laughs> but nobody really wants to should, see right? it either. Most people don't. I mean, unless you can do it, cut it in a cool way. Exactly. Make it entertaining. I, and to, to be honest, I, I did that. And like one of my old, old videos, uh -huh. I did a super rapid prototyping design for a phone holder from laser cut Smart. wood. I was just showing like it started with this idea and went from there, there, there. That's why I went to lasers because they're so quick. Oh. It's the one thing that I don't like about 3D printers is the speed. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Because it's so slow. So lasers it's compared so to a 3D printed part, like how fast is a laser going to pop something out? Oh, I'll have this made in a day. Okay. Oh, okay. Every single piece. Right. Every single piece. Oh, every single piece will be cut out in maybe an hour or two. But it's still running G code, uh, right? But it's just faster. It's still running G code. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then from that thing that takes longer is putting it together by hand, but you're going to have that anyway with 3D printing. Right, right. So... Is, but I do think uh -huh. the future. Yeah, I was just about to ask you, what is the future? What do you think the future of 3D print design, 3D printing, where do you think it's going? Oh, it, it's a really big question. It is. Like at the end of the day, you have no idea where it's going. But I do have a few inklings of where it might be going. Mm. I have a feeling it's going to get faster. Oh, yes. Hopefully. It's going to get bigger. Mm. It's going to probably involve lasers. Ooh to do curing of something to, because lasers are just so fast right, right, and right. so powerful. So if you can use something fast and powerful, like right this minute, we're using projectors. Goodness yeah. sakes, why are you right. using a projector? <laughs> Use a laser. <laughs> like we literally have super fast, they're called Garbo lasers, lasers that are, are that are used two mirrors and they move like <laughs> that. And you should see them in action. They're so fast. Whoa. You use a Garbo laser with, UV resin. That's uh, I, I. I don't even have a a clue how fast that would make some. Have you seen but, those things? I'm sure you, you probably have, but it's like it's like a, a vat of resin or something, right? Like in a in a cube and clear glass or something, and then they're shooting lasers or lights or something in it, and it's actually yeah. rotating. And I was like, oh, that could be interesting. And and, and inside it it makes a 3D image. Right, right. You, you know what? This is crazy. You know what's actually happening? There? What? They're basically shooting two lasers to meet at one point, uh -huh. superheat the glass inside, and crack it. Huh? What? Cra wait, cr that crack the, the, the exterior glass? The glass inside. Oh, inside. Oh, why though? So, the, the, because then that's how you can, you can do that with many, many points. Uh, okay. And then it creates this fake 3D thing inside of that glass cube. Really? That's interesting. Yeah. I think I'd have to see it, it but that is crazy. So you have you seen it, it or you just seen it online? You, you can't see it because uh -huh. everything's refracting. Oh my gosh. With the lasers. Like if you looked at that, it would just be a crazy light show, but it's pretty crazy stuff. Like, Whoa. I'm, I'm amazed by it. So what do you, but yeah. what do you want to create? Like what in the next five years, I know you're doing a lot of precision thing. You're building courses and build, building things a lot. But like, what do you like your dream designs? Like, do you, do you want to build like big stuff, small things, products? Like what? My, so I, I'm stuck in, in a hard place right mm -hmm. now, which is I love 3D printing, mm -hmm. but I'm a very eco-conscious dude. Dude, I'm right there with you. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up. So, Let's go. So I, I'm just like, again, we're talking about the future. Mm -hmm. I really think the future of all of this is going to go sustainable I agree. Because, I agree like we have the what are they called the sustainability goals set by the eu mm -hmm. like these are all these goals and one of them is the whole thing of renewable slash biodegradable and more than biodegradable home compostable yes uh, stuff because there are there are biodegradable filaments that is pla right pla is made out of starch right it's basically usable in that sense but it's not biodegradable yeah. there's two definitions of biodegradable one of them is industrial biodegradability industrial. the other one is home compostability home compostability and home compostable means that you get this thing you chuck it in your compost in your back garden as long as you have a place that's around 
20-ish degrees. I don't know what that Celsius is in Fahrenheit. Celsius up. Um, uh, I'm not sure. Probably like 50, 60, it should, 70. It, it wouldn't get <laughs> hot enough right. to and have the right condition mm -hmm. to then biodegrade within about eight-ish months. Okay, that's amazing. Now, that would be great. Uh, industrial is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. You need the correct acidity, uh, correct pressure, mm. and the correct temperature of about 60 degrees Celsius for it to actually break down. Whoa. So and, yeah, so most people probably in their backyard <laughs> aren't going to have that. Exactly. Yeah. So for instance, um, Maker Muse, yeah, yeah. he did a whole thing about um, algae PLA yes. outdoors with his nuke rocket thing mm -hmm. that he got from Fallout. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that worked out great for him because he's in Australia. Right. He's got it's those conditions. Hot. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's hot. He used it as a plant pot. So it's got dirt in mm -hmm. it and he's got direct sunlight. <laughs> yes. It's going to start to break down. I've, but I've seen some people doing then, it with mycelium. Have you seen that? Like uh, mushroom yes. type stuff. And it's like they, they're trying to replace, uh, you know, the foam packaging just, just your yes. way, just your way. I've got a special something. Heck here. yeah. But yeah, eventually I think, I hope that uh, we can help as, as a community help the, uh, the pl plastic problem. What you got? Oh, yes, you did it. This is my yes. and hemp. And what hemp? This is carbon negative. Oh my gosh. So what are you trying to create there? Or are you just testing? So I'm just testing. Okay. This here is basically wow. made by some friends of mine. Mm -hmm. um, just down the road. Mm -hmm. They're like, leading eu um what are they called mycologists uh -huh, or something uh -huh, like that uh -huh. and goodness gracious me like the stuff that he's making there like he's one of the things that they're able to make is actually carbon negative protein whoa i don't even know and what that, that means what does that mean carbon mind. negative proteins like what are we talking so about here so you know the whole idea of carbon neutral right no <laughs> so, car okay. so everything everything creates carbon okay okay yeah yes yes because we're burning fuels to make it right or literally everything mm -hmm. so hemp is really interesting because the amount of energy you need to grow hemp mm -hmm. is actually it soaks up more carbon than the energy <laughs> needed to make it it's like eating celery that's great <laughs> but it, yeah yeah basically it's sort of that it's eating celery in the plant, in plant world. World. that's great so you grow this hemp and then from the hemp, you use that as the substrate to use for mycelium mm -hmm. um, bills. And you can create a type of mushroom. Mm -hmm. And the type of mushroom, it's called an, a functional protein. Ooh. That when you have this mushroom with some fiber in your body, it turns into protein. Oh, beautiful. And the the worst co2 emitting thing that we eat is protein interesting and there you go you've like honestly if this got taken in like truly by industry mm -hmm. it would revolutionize Everything. the food industry well so because all of a sudden from being the most polluting food mm -hmm. it would actually be the greenest food wow well it's so that thing that you just held up that that thing could that be maybe there's a you think that could be used that material could be used with lasers somehow? I guess it would be... Yes, that, that is a plan. My plan is to basically slice it. Okay, okay. And see if I can laser cut oh it. Oh my gosh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I'm gonna, that would be technically, cool. it should be possible. Dude, that's a great idea. So yeah, I, I remember, like, I literally, I remember calling Amber one time, like, really sad, because I was like, I was building 3D print courses and stuff, and I was like, man, like, I'm just adding to the problem. Like, I'm just teaching people how to make plastic stuff, you know? So I was yeah. like, maybe the, the bigger goal of the, one of the companies is to help like turn the plastic waste into something else. And meanwhile, building types of other materials that we can use. So we don't have to use plastics yeah. anymore. Yeah. That that's, that's the key yeah. thing. Like, I don't think you can phase out plastic. No, like, no. like even, even to make those, you have to use a plastic bucket <laughs> or a plastic bag. Right. Because mushrooms are incredible. They will eat, eat everything, everything organic. Yeah. Like what you're talking about, this mycelium printing. Mm -hmm. It's I, like toothpaste. I don't like <laughs> it. Yeah, it's not really mycelium printing. What they do from the ones that I've seen anyway, mm -hmm. 
is they create a hull mm -hmm. out of sort of vase mode mm -hmm. and then stuff that with hay that's inoculated with mushroom. Gotcha. And because PLA is organic, mm. the mu mushroom absorbs the PLA and eats it up. Exactly. <laughs> so then once, once the mushroom's done its thing and it's gone full mycelial all over the place, it's so incredibly strong. You then basically dry it out. You sterilize it and it is strong. Like that's I'm amazing. Not kidding. This would hurt me if I hit it off the top of my head. Oh, really? I was and thinking it it'd feel like more like so cork. This, this feels is, like more like concrete or chalk. Here, I've got knock on it. <laughs> knock on my, it. <laughs> my my alcohol free beer. Yeah, I don't drink that. But okay, 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 that helps. Solid. And this, these two, mm -hmm. so empty bottle and this, mm -hmm. I would say they weigh about the same. Wow, interesting. It's, 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 it's amazing stuff. So you amazing. want to make products with futuristic biomaterial, it sounds like. I would love to. Yes. Like, and you're... That, that, is, that is pretty much, well, that's basically being a scientist. I want to be that. Like, you are. Just, just <laughs> I, say you are, and then you are. I mean, you've got it in your room, you know? Like, you're obviously doing some crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. But yeah, um, let's see. Something else that I think that's going to happen in the future... Yeah a lot with this mycelial stuff mm. is topology optimization. Like uh, like AI kind of stuff? Um, AI and right this minute, the whole like building a 3D model for the forces that are going to be on Ooh, it. Okay. And then removing all the rest of the material from it. Interesting, yeah. And right this minute, I think that's going to happen a lot. I know it's happened in Amsterdam. They've actually built a metal bridge I've seen... by a robot. I saw that. Printing. Okay, I saw. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yes, okay. So... So they've done that one. And then uh, with that, what's going to happen is I have a feeling there's going to be a sway in product design. I agree. And the sway in product design is they will no longer have things past 45 degrees. They will <gasps> no longer do things that aren't 3D printable. That 45 degree rule. Go, yeah, you're a thoy. <laughs> that thoy. Dude, look, I printed, I printed this this morning just to test it, but it prints like this. It's a battery holder that stacks upon each other. It's just a prototype, but it prints like that. It's just to Whoa. show the 45 degree rule. And then you just go click. <laughs> that's nice. Nice. But yes. But yeah, I, oh, that's what I really think the future has. I, the future has will there be two conventions mm -hmm. of product design. One of them will be 3D print friendly mm -hmm. because I think manufacturing is going to take this on and manufacturing is going to be like, hey, nah, that's that's not going to be compatible with my fast process, yes. FDM, SLA, whatever they want to use. Mm -hmm. And then they'll be like, go back to the drawing board. It, it's, it's coming. So we, are the future, uh, we are the future future product designers, essentially. Like we are. Pretty like much. You know the old school cats. And sorry if you're listening, anybody. But like if you're not adapting to the new style, then you're probably just going to get left behind, you know, <laughs> if you're not thinking yeah. additively. Well, I know that a whole bunch of people that are taking my course, mm -hmm. like I've actually had comments of people that are like in their 80s taking the Blender course. Yes. And it's awesome. It is. I've, I, and I'm surprised that we're doing a workshop right now, the April workshop. And there's two gentlemen that are in their maybe 50s, 60s, 70s. And I was like, whoa, but they're like, like he, one guy's running a flower shop, him and his wife. And he wants to like have his printer up front, but he wants to custom design all these vases. And I'm like, dude, that's a great idea. Like exactly. he's an exactly. entrepreneur. Like I love it. Uh, okay, so uh, what other advice would you give to people, like for everyone listening, if they like say they they've never done any 3D anything, they're maybe they have a 3D printer at their house, but they want to start printing ideas. Like, what advice would you get to those people getting started? I've sort of thought about this one a lot because yeah. I'm thinking of myself right at the beginning. Yeah, young Jonathan, and <laughs> I would say sort of understand the incredible diverse skill set of the area you're going into mm. and what you're about to learn because it is so much more than just 3d printing mm -hmm. like you're you're learning a whole new skill set of design once you go into the 3d space you're going to encounter everyone you'll encounter people that are rendering fake things for product design 
You'll encounter people that are doing game design. Mm. You'll encounter virtual reality, yeah. photogrammetry. You'll find everyone in the same pool. And it's, it's up to you how deep you want to go into it. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, the deeper you go, the funner it gets. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you, you will, you'll, you'll get hooked like me, which is, I, I started with Blender just thinking precision. Mm -hmm. And now I'm doing rendering. Yeah, your and renders look great, dude. They're doing really I, good. I, I'm, I'm doing like procedural textures mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I never thought in a million years that I would do that. But yeah. That's great advice. And Thank you for sharing that. No problem. I know so the whole thing, I know it sounds cliche, but if you fail, just keep trying. Yes. Like fail fast. Failure is <laughs> exactly just like rapid fail prototyping. Fast. Yeah, fail fast and pivot. That was actually I was reading the book um of uh, the guy of the head of Pixar. And uh he was that was one of his guys. I think Brad Bird, the guy who did uh Finding Nemo, that was his like motto to his crew and his people like hey i don't care if we're wrong like let's just get wrong really fast so we can pivot and fix it and do make something amazing and i was like oh that's yeah. great advice <laughs> absolutely well there's also one cut what's the catch yes and that is intellectual property is no joke Woo, let's go into there let's go there so yeah what do you what are your feelings on intellectual property and all that for 3d print design so um it's, it's actually something that I'm currently exploring within Blender mm. because Blender is all open source, right, right. right? And the whole thing of open source, it's all based behind something called a GPL license, okay. which basically means whatever you make that's for Blender and you put it in Blender, you have to give the source code openly to anyone. Oh, I didn't know that. So, oh, wow. Yeah. That's good to know. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Cool. So literally, I... I I'd still need to read up a little bit more on right, it, right. but I would say, don't take my word right, for right. it, but it, from what I see, GPL basically would mean that if someone creates an add-on mm -hmm. and sells the add-on, mm -hmm. and then they, you put it into your blender, mm -hmm. if you're a real stinker of a person, mm -hmm. you could literally copy and paste the code of that add-on mm -hmm. and sell it yourself. Right, which people will do. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. but like, it's, it's, it's weird. Like, I'm totally for open source and I'm totally for all of this. Mm -hmm. And it comes now with the whole idea of NFTs. I know. And yes. Now we've, so interesting. We've got NFTs. Yes. We've got intellectual property problems. Yeah. We've got GPL. We've got such a mix of things. Mm -hmm. Not only that, we've got creative commons and the, what is it? Four, five, six different licenses that come with that. Yeah. And unless you're really switched on, you can get bit pretty hard by intellectual property, especially. So mm. more than anything, I would say don't do anything Disney. Yeah. That's dude. GoPro that's just basic. cranked down. So I got an email from, cause I have a, I did a, a GoPro mount head thing, you know, like for parkour yeah. and stuff for one of my film buddies. And I got an email cause it says GoPro POV head mount, right? That's what the title looked like. And they were like, Hey, GoPro yeah. just, they didn't do a cease and desist, but they were essentially saying like, Hey, you can't say GoPro blank, blank. You have to say blank, yeah. blank, blank, GoPro, you know, for GoPro. Cause they're saying what? they don't I'm want, surprised. yeah, they, they don't, they they didn't want to take down the designs. They just don't want you to put the, the word GoPro first, because then it's like that's people, so they were saying, I guess people could associate it with like, that's one of GoPro's products, I guess is the only thing I can think. But that was a big email I got from Shapeways a few weeks ago. Uh, that's crazy yeah. because I, I've had something like that. And I can't remember exactly what it was. What was? I remember it, you said something earlier about GoPro. That's why I was gonna I was gonna bring it up. Was it? Was it? I, I can't remember. But it's changed. Yeah, I, I had it that I had the name of like I don't know. Let's say let's say Baby Yoda. Okay. Yeah. Perfect okay. example. Yeah. So Baby Yoda <laughs> took over the internet. Yes. And everybody was making Baby Yoda. Baby uh -huh. Yoda. Now, the problem is you cannot say, hey, you can't have this in because Baby Yoda, and no point is it said Baby Yoda in Mandalorian. Ah. However, Yoda yeah. itself is, an is icon. intellectual yeah. property, <laughs> and it's an icon, yeah. and it's a brand. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. I forgot there's like a 2080 rule that if as long as it's modified at least 20%, mm -hmm. Like then there's like a fudgeability about it. But the thing that you're referring back to the exact same thing, mm. it's sort of like saying, well, 
you can't say that. Like I was expecting that GoPro would tell you say action cam. Right. That's instead. what I thought. That's what I thought. They were, that's what I was actually thinking about calling it that. But yeah, it's it's very interesting where it's all going, and I, I think that's what is interesting that we all need to start talking about because it doesn't see everyone's just like, oh, it's it's fine. You know, we're not going, we're not hurting anybody, but it's like, but there's got to be a better way where everyone can still create what they want. And then, you know, everyone, the big guys still get their cut or whatever. Like, so it's, it's, I honestly think that the NFT way is pretty interesting. I need to research now, more on it. Okay. So I'll, I'll I can give you a, a synopsis. It's like digital of art, right? Essentially. No, 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 not really. Okay, no, uh, not, not really. No. If we were gonna, if we we're gonna put that into an absolute basic idea, yes. is damn it, I don't have my box isn't open, and I don't know if I can remember how to open my no, puzzle box. No, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, but underneath it, what it has uh, is a serial number, mm-hmm. right? So you know that that is unique to that box. Ah, I got you. Right. So an NFT is basically a code, a unique identifier that goes. <laughs> exactly yeah, okay. that goes with the digital artwork ah interesting that's it whoa nothing else okay what that's you great. Do is you basically give that digital artwork like a wristband mm. so then whenever you do a blockchain mm-hmm. so if here's here's another one teaching people <laughs> blockchain go on now, <laughs> uh, I'm, i've only just got my head around yes. this okay yeah. so blockchain think of it as two tribes Mm -hmm. you're not two tribes you're in a tribe (laughs) right and this tribe guy goes hey look um i want you to build me a hut because i really like the hut that you've Mm -hmm. built right Mm -hmm. and then it goes okay well you just owe me this later okay now when this happened everybody else in the tribe was seeing this Mm -hmm. right okay this guy then built the hut and now he's gone back and said no you never said that well what blockchain Mm -hmm. does is the rest of the tribe is the blockchain, which goes, ah, uh, you said by our account, uh-huh, we remember you owe him that. That's okay. And cool. that's basically what blockchain is. Whoa. Like it's the idea that everyone is verifying everything. Whoa. Now I have a big problem with it as well in the sense that again, eco, um, yeah. like one transaction on a blockchain mm-hmm. Is the equivalent of seven hundred and twenty thousand car transactions. That's what I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that it was kind of an environmental like push. It, every kind it, of it, it is. Huh. It is a bombshell. Like <laughs> it has the same um, CO two mm-hmm. footprint mm-hmm. as New Zealand. Wow. Wow. So it there's is. maybe, but maybe there's yeah. So maybe we're just there it's, again. It's, it's this early. Has to do yeah. with Energy sources. Though. Right. Right. Mm, so then maybe energy can change exactly yeah. once energy changes yeah. then that's no longer such a big problem Man. and but god like so the whole blockchain thing so you get artwork uh-huh. it has that wristband mm-hmm. and then that wristband sort of has a unique thing to it that because it's got that unique code mm-hmm. and everybody knows that code and who it's been to in the past mm-hmm. they can go all the way to the beginning when that nft got made and when that nft gets made you can tell the artist, hey, any single time that this gets, it can, well, I'm not copied, but sold, uh-huh. um, I get a 10% commission. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Okay. So it's like, so that. that's the power of NFT. Holy so moly. One, I get one it artist, now. Yeah. Yeah. If one artist sells a piece of artwork for $10 yeah. to some yeah. other random dude, he was a big art collector. Mm-hmm. He goes to his arty friends, and one of his arty friends goes, damn, I like that. Yep. That. How much you want it? He goes hundred grand. Yep. At that point, you d- now because you set that as a ten percent commission rate. Whoa. Whenever it gets sold, that comes back to you. You just made a grand. So I like that idea. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That's, it's sort of like you throw intellectual property into the mm-hmm. wind a little bit, mm-hmm. and you just go, "Hey, look, share the idea, sell the idea." But at the end of the day, whenever it the original thing gets sold, mm-hmm. I get a cut from it. Whoa. Whoa, that's so, wild. Yeah, yeah, that is still like semi hard for me to wrap my hand. I know in like five, four, three to four years, we're going to be like, oh, it's, a, you know, but yeah, it's uh, definitely got to. It's taken me like over a year to understand. Blockchain. Yeah, I remember looking up uh, just like uh, uh, cryptocurrency back in the day, like early. And I was like, I still and then I bought. I, I know. We don't have to go. Yeah, we don't. Oh, go ahead. Go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so 
way back. Uh -huh. And I'm talking way back when I only had a laptop. Okay. So <laughs> Those <I'm talking> days. <laughs> right at the beginning when Bitcoin just came okay. out. And I used to be super nerd. Well, not that I'm not. Used to. No, still we are. still are. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, I actually went and started mining. Oh, okay. Right okay. The Whoa, yeah, you like, were I'm super talking, early adopter. It came out maybe a month mm -hmm. and I was there. Mm -hmm. It was a pain to set mm -hmm. up. There was no user interfaces. You were very much doing this the hardest way possible. <laughs> I had my computer running for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And I got a total of five Bitcoin. Whoa, mining. And I got really annoyed <laughs> because I couldn't play my video games. Oh, okay. You got to balance and it out. At the end of the day, I was using more electricity from my mom hey. than what I was making in Bitcoin because the Bitcoin was only like, what, well, not even 20 or anything back then. <laughs> it was like zero. Yeah. So I went, you know what? Gonna forget about mm. it and of course back then there wasn't really like an account you had this big long hash code oh. which is your wallet i don't know that anymore right, so right, somewhere right. in the your four coins yeah. i have five five freaking bitcoins <laughs> just floating and ah oh, i i kick myself i really do kick myself that's hilarious yeah well that's what one thing i love about you is you're just you're an early adopter you know like you literally will just jump in on lots of things and just go into it well, it's sort of like a you've got to really sort of weigh the risk to reward mm -hmm. with most things um so risk to reward was for instance my workshop okay. i made an entire workshop building video i saw that on, on your my YouTube, YouTube channel. yes yeah mm -hmm. so that was quite a big risk because i'd never done anything like that before mm -hmm. now how do you bring down risk Usually research. Mm -hmm. I educate yourself. Of research. <laughs> yeah, educate education. Yourself. I did about three months of planning mm. before I even like bought the first materials. So with that, I got the reward of something much better for a much lower price. Yep. But it was still a big risk right. because I was saying it's on you. Yeah, and you're not you're not scared to do the actual work too. Exactly. Yeah. It, it's all early adopters, yep. you need to do the Yeah, work. you got to be there, grunting. There, yeah. is, there, is no, there is no other way about it. Like the first 3D printers that were 3D printing, hands down to them. Oh, yeah. Goodness me. They, they, they truly went through hell. Yeah. Like, Imagine the people I, in I, like 87 who were like trying to get it going then. They're like, this is going to revolutionize I, everything. And it's like, uh, you're like 20, 40 years early. You know? Yeah. They, they, well, <laughs> I think the main thing that they didn't have was the material science or the computer everything to go with it. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just crazy. I, I not, unfortunately, it was the whole idea that the pat, it was patented so hard as well. Right. That's when it all unleashed. It was, it, yeah, it was locked for 50 years, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Something like years. in 2000 or something when yeah. the maker bots so, and all those started coming out. <laughs> exactly. And as soon as... Here again, we're talking about intellectual property. Yes. Like as soon as you open it up, that's when innovation happens. Yep. And I don't know. It, I've got a love-hate relationship with the whole idea of intellectual property. Yes, I think that anybody who's created something should have their say and say that's mine. Ownership. And yeah, yeah. You should own what you labor. Own. That's what I'm. That's what I struggle with too. Is like I love the 3D printing. Everything's open and free. And then, but it's like also we we come from artists you know we're we've, we're used to making money for any kind of creative thing we do so it's like we've got the creator the idea is the most valuable part and the creator has to get some kind of cut for their time and their their detail you know all of their skills that they're putting into yeah. this so there's got to be a way and we're gonna figure it out Jonathan. There's be something <laughs> we're gonna figure it yeah. out it, 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 it's interesting because mm -hmm. it also goes into it goes so deep this because frankly it goes into the whole idea of algorithms and then the whole chat about privacy and all the right. rest because all of this sort of interlinks from blockchain to environmental it's all connected things, it's, all, it's all connected it's all at the end of the day like the only way that you can watchdog people about what they're doing and how their carbon offset is is through algorithms 
who followed you. Right. It's like and then everybody yeah. then then goes about saying, Oh, oh I don't want to be followed. Right. But yeah. Yeah. In, look, in an idealist world, and I have no idea if this would work at all. Right, right. So we're dreaming here. <laughs> big, big, big dreams yes. here. Um, it's sort of like privacy is an illusion. Oh. And and why is there anything to hide? Ooh. Like, well, sure, surely if the top, top, top of power had nothing to hide as well. Mm -hmm. Transparency. And absolute, yeah. yeah. And the absolute like firstborn baby has nothing to hide no. either. Then that, that so much gets removed. Whoa. Like at that point, it's just liberated. Like everyone's ideas is floating all around. Everybody sees sort of everything. Right. And that's here. I'm going to go. Yeah. Go sci let's now. go. Yeah. Let's go to the future. Here's like what's this world look like? Huh? Oh, in your brains, world. in your brains. So we're like in a virtual reality, like the matrix, like well, so, <laughs> we're in the matrix, in the matrix. <laughs> sort of might be, who knows? <laughs> well, to be honest, like, was it Elon uh -huh. is making is making neural? Oh yeah, I've seen Facebook and was test playing with it too. It, it's some it's some crazy stuff that he's making there. Mm -hmm. But like I've listened to the podcast that he's done, mm -hmm. and he has like big plans. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, he's sort of saying the same thing here, which is privacy is an illusion. Interesting. Like, like because if you're married to your privacy, you're you're no longer wanting to innovate, really. Ah. Because at that point, you're, you're closing a gate to innovation. Right, right, you're right. You're saying, no, 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 this is mine. Right. No, no one else it's is. It's like but old it should school. Really be. Yeah. yeah. It should really be, this is humanities. This is for all of us. Exactly. Whoa, that's, I, I, that's, some, again, that's some huge. Alien invasion comes. Right. We'll see the world differently. Right, right, right. <laughs> no, that's great. That's awesome. Dude, thank you so much for talking with me. This has been so much fun. Um, where can people find you? What are you working on right now? Anything, let them know. Yeah, absolutely. So basically, um, I'm making everything and anything. I'm trying to niche down, and I have niched down, which is basically 3D printing, Ooh. laser cutting, um, electronics, mm -hmm. VR, Ooh. and photogrammetry yeah if you want to learn all those things that's what maker tale is all about i'm going to be making a crash course pretty soon on like learning precision very quickly sort of like if you want to get bite right into mm. the best meaty bit of the biscuit of 3d Ow. modeling for 3d printing i'm going to make that course soon but it's not made just yet so go over to my website yes. which is makertales.com and sign up to my little newsletter there, and I'll let you know as soon as possible. Cool, that's yeah, awesome. Thanks for having Wait, me no, on. I got a game. We're gonna play a game. So uh, oh, Amber God. wanted me to do this. It's only a few. Okay, so this is just word association. Uh, it's all three D printing related. Um, all right, so I'll just say a word, and then you just or say two words, and then you just pick one. PLA, TPU. PLA. Okay, FDM or SLA. FDM. Three D scan or three D model. Three D model Ooh. supports. Or no supports? No support. STL or OBJ? OBJ. Box modeling or sculpting? Box. Prusa slice. Uh, oh, what? I would say they're both the same. Okay, okay, okay. Touche, touche. Prusa slicer or Cura slicer? Or Prusa. Prusa, okay. My Mini Factory, Colt 3D? Colt 3D. Shapeways, 3D hubs? 3D hubs. Okay. Practical design or decorative design? Fusion. <laughs> <laughs> um, digital download? Practical design. Practical yeah, practical design. Digital download or print on demand? Digital download. Sell a product or take on a client? That's it. <laughs> if I had to pick one, I would say celebrate Ooh, okay cool that's it yeah so thanks for coming on <laughs> amber was like let's just play this game so i was like okay let's do it um but yeah thanks for coming to hang with us uh hopefully we'll have you on another season another episode and uh yeah keep us keep me in the loop i'm i'll talk to you on discord i'm sure but um oh absolutely. yeah keep creating and uh what are you keep what are you building keep building <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just building everything Let's do it. actually i'm soon going to be building a summer house Ooh. out in the garden and i'll be doing photogrammetry oh. to go and test build that and do the whole thing in blender oh my gosh so dude post it go up check it yes out. post that up what um um, um are you is it going to be like a small house type thing it's, it's pretty it's big, a big house two meters by two meters Whoa. so dude that's so, awesome it's, well cool we'll enjoy the rest yeah. of the day 
and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Fantastic. Later, bro. See ya. Peace. Bye. Thank you all so much for listening today. And again, thanks to Jonathan for chatting with me. Be sure to check out his YouTube channel, Maker Tales, where he does some really great work while sharing with makers of the world some tips and tricks in laser cutting, blender, and more. Be sure to check in next week. We'll be talking to one of my favorite makers in the space, Vicky, aka Tiga. She and I talked about her experience selling 3D printed object on Etsy, where she's picked up some really great tips and tricks for everyone who's going to be listening. And while you wait, remember that you can get yourself a Print That Thing membership at ptt.live so you can finally start 3D printing your own ideas. I'm Jay Wall. As always, keep creating.